So today let's try to quickly fix this AC-DC adapter. This one's for a travel fridge. In this case the much more efficient compressor fridge. Not the bloody inefficient Peltier one. The fridge is supposed to work on a vehicle voltage about 12 to 15 volts. Typically about 14 to 15 when the engine's running. But it can also run on mains and that's what this adapter is for. It produces 14.5 volts. Which is about the alternator voltage. And 6 amps 87 watts. Basically 14.5 times 6. And the input is a universal mains voltage. And this one doesn't work. It only works with no load. Let's try to verify it in a dodgy way. Let's try to connect it using this. You don't have the original cable and let's plug it in. No explosion. Let's try to measure the output voltage. And it actually is what it's supposed to be with no load. Let's try a small 3 watt lamp up. It still works. Nothing. This draws about 5 amps. It does not exceed the rating. A 21 watt lamp up. This one is supposed to draw less than 2 amps. Still doesn't work. So apparently the power supply only works at a very light load. Definitely not its 6 amps rating. So let's try to open it. Of course this one is glued or welded. We have to open the housing a little bit destructively. Let's try to wrap it in something and press it around the seams. After pressing it along this seam and this seam, does it actually open or do I have to pry it? It actually opens. And yes, the more experienced ones can probably already tell what's wrong here. And the board is out of the box. Yes, you can look at these capacitors and see they're bulging. They're probably the problem. And also the symptom is typical. It supplies the right voltage when it's not loaded or very lightly loaded, but when it's loaded more, it fails. The mains comes in here. It goes via some interference filter. Before that there is the NTC thermistor for inrush current limitation. There's also this interference capacitor. And it goes then into the bridge rectifier. Then a big smoothing capacitor on the primary side, an electrolytic one. Which is not bulging, fortunately. Here is some heat sink for the bridge rectifier, for the primary switching transistor. Here are the pins of it, the drain, the source and the gate of it. The transformers here, the switching one. Here seems to be a 6-pin control chip. Some small components, a very good isolation and distance on the board. Some safety capacitors between the primary and the secondary side. And of course the camera battery discharged. In the meantime I changed the capacitors. I used to have two batteries to rotate, but the aftermarket one actually inflated like the capacitors and I can't use it anymore. In this one I also had to round the edge of it, which was supposed to be rounded but wasn't. It's really nice to have good quality tools to work with, isn't it? A couple of weeks ago I was trying to cut something and one of the jaws of this one just came off. But let's go back to the power supply. On the secondary side we can see a 431 voltage reference, some 6 pin chip here. And I was thinking this is a diode, but it's actually a synchronous rectifier MOSFET. And this is its control chip. Measuring the bad ones, the capacitance is just about 400 micro, the other one 300 micro. Let's measure the impedance. This one is 7.4 bloody ohms. The other one about 6 ohms, which is extremely high ESR for a 2200 micro capacitor. For comparison, a good 2200 micro 25 volt electrolytic capacitor has just 45 milliohm ESR. And a different type, just 24 milliohms. And of course, you should always check the primary capacitors discharged. The ESR of it is 380 milliohms, which should be acceptable. It's a high voltage, about 400 volt capacitor with less capacitance, so it can have a higher ESR and still be good. And this meter typically reads is a bit lower. These capacitors don't seem to be the best quality, made by whatever this logo is. But otherwise it doesn't seem to be that bad. There is a synchronous rectifier, a nice isolation and distance for redundancy to interference suppression capacitors in a series between the primary and secondary side. There is a thermistor, NTC thermistor for inrush current limitation. There is also some fuse, so it should be safe. Even some interference suppression inductor on the secondary side. And the testing time again, hopefully with no explosion. Nice. And if I try to load it, 
Amazing, it works. And the LED lights up. And it seems it can be used again. I just have to glue it together. That's it. It was a quick repair. And coincidentally, I'm also working on a Peltier fridge power supply. And this will be a longer and much more detailed video. That's it. And if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon, and using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me. This channel couldn't exist without you.